Could the rise of cryptocurrencies be enabling a new era of sanctions evasion? Let's delve into this intriguing world, where the lines between finance, technology, and geopolitics blur, with the stablecoin Tether at its heart. Tether, a titan in the crypto world, has been walking a thin line for years, defying money laundering laws and engaging in financial games to keep its stablecoin, USDT, afloat. But a new use case for Tether has emerged which could spell trouble. Sanctions evasion. The international financial sanctions system led by the US and Europe serves as a financial barrier for serious offenders, including terrorists, enemy countries, and major criminals. The US views the power of the dollar and the sanction system as part of its national defense, a tool of American power and values. Violating these sanctions is a grave offense that can result in hefty fines. But Tether, it seems, is unfazed. Tether's sanctions violations first came to light two years ago in August 2022, when the US sanctioned Tether's partner Tornado Cash. Tornado Cash had been a favorite tool of North Korea's Lazarus Group, enabling them to launder stolen Ethereum and acquire hard currency. Despite this, Tether shrugged off the sanctions, claiming that it did not operate in the US or serve US customers, and therefore was not obliged to comply with US sanctions. However, Tether's involvement in sanctions evasion didn't stop there. From August 2021 to June 2023, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad received $93 million in crypto, with wallets connected to Hamas receiving $41 million over a similar period. The common denominator? Almost all of these transactions were made in USDT, Tether's stablecoin. In 2023, research by Chainalysis and TRM Labs revealed that stablecoins like Tether were the preferred choice for illicit crypto flows, scam transactions, and sanctions evasion. Tether, particularly on the Tron blockchain, had become the currency of choice for terrorist financing entities. Fast forward to April 2024, when reports emerged that PDVSA, Venezuela's state-run oil company, was steering users to USDT to avoid having their money frozen in foreign bank accounts. Even after U.S. sanctions on Venezuela were briefly lifted, they were quickly reimposed when Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro failed to uphold his commitment to free and fair elections. That same month, tethers were reported as being indispensable in funding the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Russian intermediaries were using USDT to evade U.S. sanctions and procure parts for drones and other equipment. The U.S. and the U.K. are currently investigating $20 billion in tethers that passed through Garantax, a Russian-based crypto exchange that both countries have sanctioned. In conclusion, the rise of cryptocurrencies, particularly Tether, poses a challenging question about the effectiveness of financial sanctions in the digital age. Tether's role in sanctions evasion is undeniable, from North Korea to Palestine and from Venezuela to Russia. As the world continues to grapple with the implications of this new financial frontier, one thing is certain. The role of cryptocurrencies in sanctions evasion is a reality that cannot be ignored.